I'm very happy to present the, the co-creation uh, approach in the Fair Chain project. Um, I also saw uh, some colleagues of Fair Chain here, so from all different levels. Uh, Genevieve is here, the coordinator, and we have the uh, lead from Work Package One, the innovation mapping and co-creation, Bärbel here, and we also have uh, Hartmut from the Austrian case study today here. Um, uh, just a, a brief overview of uh, the Fairchain project. So um, it's about the innovative intermediate food value chains. So we want to redesign uh, food value chains to be intermediate. Um, from the one side, we want to scale up uh, small and mid-size actors. And uh, from the other side, we will uh, want also to give the opportunity uh, for downscaling of large actors. And we are working in the dairy and fruit mm -hmm. and vegetable sector. Um, we have 20 organizations from eight countries. Uh, just uh, for completeness on this slide, an overview of them. And um, the goals of uh, the, the co-creation approach in fair chain are that we uh, want to address uh, very different kinds of stakeholders, not uh, to concentrate too much on the consumer level. Um, we want to focus on the entire value chain and uh, have this uh, a broad perspective. Uh, we want to uh, enable a continuous exchange um, between the fair chain case studies. So to give like a kind of framework for, for our case studies and um, also give them the, the floor to, to have exchange and to learn from each other. And uh, we also keep an eye that our activities uh, will last over the project duration. And um, so to make really the, the difference, um, each case study is uh, very specific and has um, other needs and um, opportunities. And uh, we, we see that and we want to address this. Um, and of course, the, the fair chain project itself, we want to reach a, a fairer distribution of benefits and risks along the whole uh, value chain. Um, the co-creation in fair chain, uh, many points uh, were already addressed in, in the presentation before. Um, so we want to integrate the, the various views uh, of the stakeholders um, in along the value chain. And we have this import, important steps uh, defined for us. So the stakeholder identification, uh, which we put a lot of effort already uh, in this topic and we see the stakeholder identification also as a continuous process. So we uh, will not stop it. We will keep this uh, list uh, during the whole project and adapt it. And um, we want to work with it like uh, with a living document. Um, and we want to facilitate dialogue and the sharing of knowledge. Um, of, and of course, we also want to keep the stakeholders interested. We want to give them incentives to participate. And this is, of course, also depending on the different opportunities in the various case studies. And um, what I already said before is that uh, it is very important for us that we want to build long lasting corporations. So during the a whole duration of the project. We want to keep the stakeholders with us. And we also want to achieve that they will be there after the project ends. Here is um, a short overview of the co-creation process. So we have uh, task 1.3 until task 1.5. And um, we start with the goal defining workshops. Then uh, we will have implementation workshops. Uh, after two years, we will have a midterm review workshop. So that's the, the more official part of getting 
all the case studies together and um, we will have the final review workshop in the end. Um, this, what I said, this midterm review workshop is, is like the official part. We also have um, uh, continuous meetings with all the case studies and there is a continuous exchange between them. What is uh, special for Fairchain is that we always test the, the concept we develop, for example, for the goal defining workshop in the Austrian case study. Um, and then we redefine the concept, we uh, see what uh, worked very well, what we have to change, what we have to add. And then uh, we train the other case studies uh, to uh, conduct this workshop on their own. So we already had the, the first round. Uh, we had the goal defining workshop in, in April in Austria, and uh, we presented in May uh, the redefined concept to the other case studies. So to the case study France, Belgium, Switzerland, Greece, and Sweden. And uh, now it's uh, the turn uh, for the case studies uh, to conduct their own goal defining workshops. And this approach we will use in all the different tasks. So also for the implementation and for the final review workshop. On the next slide, we zoom in in task 1.3. Um, so first we develop the concept for the workshop. Then we will test the workshop in the Austrian case study. And then we will give the training workshop for all other case studies. And um, in the in the last step, the last step of this uh, uh, of this process, um, we have the individual workshops in the case studies in the remaining five case studies. Um, in in the in the stakeholder identification which was uh, or is a very important uh, point in Fairchain, we um, had a look at the effectiveness and the influence stakeholders could have. And um, we categorized them in, in the uh, pastel categories. So the dimensions of uh, political, ecological, social, technical, economical, and legal, as well as the value chain stages. And um, we asked uh, the case studies to uh, build a very broad um, mapping of the, of the stakeholders and to check with these categories if uh, they can achieve this. Um, and um, the, the, the actors uh, can provide information on the current status, on uh, existing initiatives, on necessary resources, they can provide ideas, um, other comparable projects, um, development paths, and um, we are now working on, on this process and how and define how to uh, incorporate them. This is uh, just some questions on, on the various steps I presented. I will not go, go uh, through all of the questions just to for you maybe afterwards to read. And um, the expected outcomes, um, of course, the, the broad goal of Fairchain is to create intermediate value chains, so something in between. And um, of course, the, the uh, cooperation with the stakeholders also uh, after the the project ends and we want to uh, engage uh, stakeholders as well as the case studies so all the different levels to have uh, mutual learning um, so we have the continuous exchange and between the case studies so that all the case studies learn from each other but also uh, the, the stakeholders should have um, an outcome of the process. And here, uh, my last slide um, for us, the, the key aspects of the successful co-creation is that, um, as I said before, that we have a, a very uh, broad uh, stakeholder list. We uh, have representativity among this and um, we cover all the, the stages of the value chain. 
and um, we are always open to incorporate new stakeholders in our uh, stages of the project. Um, we, uh, we knew, but we also uh, learned very fast that there is uh, no standard process so that we have to tailor everything to the needs of the case study and also the, the stakeholders of each case studies have different needs and, um, and feelings about the project. Um, we uh, want uh, openness for different kinds of innovation. So we not just want to focus on technical innovations, we want to uh, consider social and organizational innovations, um, which is most visible now in, in, the, in the Austrian case study. And uh, we started with a really early involvement of the stakeholders uh, to give them the feeling and the opportunity to uh, create uh, or start creating with us. And uh, we have in mind a really clear communication of what uh, the stakeholder can contribute and uh, what, our, what are our frame conditions. We, we cannot change and they also cannot change. And uh, we want a fair and uh, transparent, transparent uh, decision-making process and also an, an open discussion about conflicts in the project. Yes, I think that was the uh, a sh very short overview. I think I, I'm, I'm in time.